Buffalo Bills safety DeMar Hamlin is now being treated at a hospital up in New York, Buffalo, New York. He was taken there from the UC Medical Center in Cincinnati after undergoing life-saving treatment. Doctors say he's been walking and talking on his own, but more testing needs to be done to continue his, the cause of that cardiac arrest he suffered in uh, last week's Monday Night Football. He expressed his gratitude for the medical staff on Twitter. He also thanked everyone who prayed for his recovery, saying, quote, the same love you have all shown me is the same love that I plan to put back into the world and more, end quote. Doctors are calling his recovery a miracle, going from critical condition to fair condition in just a week. Our uh, medical correspondent, Dr. Corey Abair, is here this morning with more insight on this. And, and it, 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 uh, a cardiac arrest is not all that unusual. It's very unusual to see it in a football game like that. Uh, but but a, a lot of people, uh, most people, if they get CPR immediately, they do survive. That, that, that is true. And one thing I really want people to recognize here is that this young man's life was saved because someone did CPR on him immediately and they did a defibrillation with an AED. And that's not, ju not just someone, they had the entire medical staff from both teams in exactly. there and that's when you knew this was serious. Exactly, and, and, and one thing is so important is that if more people knew how to do CPR appropriately and more people weren't scared of using an AED that's hanging on every wall in every mall and every business in America, more people would survive. So that's why we're going to be doing a story on this next week where I'm going to take you through how to do CPR and how to actually use an AED because the AED is not made for medical professionals. It's made for people that are non-medical to it, use it. Is it different from the defibrillator we see in a hospital? You know, that you don't have to hold the two paddles together. Yeah. and say clear and all that. I mean, uh, all that's done for you. The machine talks for you. But, but this young man had everything at his disposal, and that's why he did so well. There's no other way, because we don't know exactly why he had the cardiac arrest. We think it's, it's uh, a V-fibrillation, but the point is, we don't know. It doesn't matter at this point. What we do know, though, is that when you get good CPR, you can survive something like this, and that's what happened. And again, there could be some underlying cause we Absolutely. just don't know about yet. Absolutely, and, 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 and they're testing. big tight-lipped yeah. about this, because there's a lot of stuff going on here between who's going to, who's responsible, what what actually happened. The or did the hit actually did cause the, it? Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of that going on and nobody knows. So, so the point is that what we need to do is, is control what we do know, which is educating our community on how to save our, our people in our community. And now switching gears, something that's become all too common in, in this world, especially as the baby boom generation gets older, is Alzheimer's. Correct. And, and there's, a, there's a new drug that is being tested uh, that, that is, is quite controversial. Yeah, so, so basically what we have now, we have a new drug out there, and it's a monoclonal antibody, and it's lakimbi. Explain what that means. Okay, monoclonal antibody is what people, nobody knew what that was until COVID came out. Right. right now, but now it's just basically an antibody made against one particular uh, thing to try to, to right. destroy it, okay? I'm trying to just be as clear as possible. So basically lakimbi, it'll become available this month. It slows early stage Alzheimer's only, not moderate stage, not late stage, it lowers the amyloid protein in the body and when you when you when you lower that that will slow the progression the issue though Eric is that are the side effects the side effects and that's why it's taking so long I mean they had 17 people uh, in this study that actually got brain bleeds they had 13 people that actually had brain swelling and three people died so it's like it cost twenty six thousand dollars for for you to get it and 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 Medicaid Medicare is not necessarily going to cover it yet so there's a lot of stuff but let you know, when you talk to a person whose family member has Alzheimer's, the folks say, I want something. Give me anything because I just because want Because it's little, not going to get better as time goes on. Exactly. And I, I, I just want my, my, my person to, to be just with me a little bit longer. So I understand that. So that's why they're getting the accelerated approval. But it is controversial. And we'll just have to see because, you know, the Would brain... Would you it, recommend it? If, if my significant other had Alzheimer's, I think I'd have to say I'd like to give it a try. I mean, I, I don't have that decision to make, but if I had to, I, my, my shoes would feel a little bit heavier in my feet. And, and quickly, we're running out of time, but, but the difference in Alzheimer's and, and early dementia, things like that. Yeah, you have to actually have that certain amount of amyloid to, to make that, uh, that diagnosis of Alzheimer's. And that just because you have dementia doesn't mean you have Alzheimer's. But once you have that diagnosis, that's when you can actually uh, be approved to actually take this drug. All right, Dr. Aber, thank you very much. Let's get over to